Good evening. This week we read about in our parasha that Yosef and his brothers all pass away. Something interesting to note is the, old, the Torah only specifically clearly tells us how old Yosef was. And he was 110 years old when he passed away. And also we learn, and we, we learn from the commentaries, that Yosef passed away before the rest of his siblings. Yosef was the second to youngest. The only younger one was Binyamin, and all of his older brothers all outlived him. So before addressing that, let's just rattle off, even though it does not say this in the Torah, through the Midrashim, these are the ages of each of the 12 tribes when they passed away. And again, we know that only once all 12 of them passed away, then, then there was a new king who made as if he didn't know who Joseph was. So listen, listen to the, the ages. Reuven passed away at 125. Again, this is all according to the Midrash. The Psukim won't, you won't, you won't get this from the Psukim. Shimon passed away at 120, Levi at 137, which besides for Yosef, we can make that calculation because once uh, Levi passed away, that's when the enslavement and the 117 last years, which were one degree harder, actually started taking place in, in Egypt. So 137, Levi, he outlived them all. Yehuda was 119, Dan was 125, Naphtali, second to longest, was 133. Gad 125, Asher 123, Sakhar 122, Zvulun 114, Yosef 110, and Binyamin was 115. We see anywhere between 110 and 137, it, it uh, ranges. Again, Yosef being the uh, dying the earliest and the, and the, the first, and Shimon, li uh, sorry, Levi, living the longest at 137 out of the 12 tribes. Now, to give an answer why Yosef was the first of the, all of them to pass away. Again, normally, if a person is born a little later, they should live a little longer, especially being that they are siblings. So why did he pass away early? Listen to three answers the uh, Midrash Me'am Loez brings down. The first answer is as follows. When Yosef's brothers came to him, they came to him before knowing he was Yosef. He was the viceroy of Egypt. They came and they said the words, and I'll quote. They said a couple times, they said actually five times, Avdecha Avinu, our father, your slave. So when the brothers said, our father, your slave, to Joseph, Joseph shouldn't have allowed them to say that. He should have stopped them in their words. How could your father even though it's their father, but it's your father too, be your slave. For the fact that he did not stop it, and it didn't, we don't see that he prevented them from saying that, he was punished. He was taken off. He was supposed to live 120 years, and those 10 years were taken off because of that. How so? They only said it five times. Well, as we know, there was an interpreter between Yosef and the brothers. He made as if he doesn't understand Hebrew. So his son, acted as the, as the interpreter. So that would mean five times two, because it was said over to the interpreter that he understood, and then the interpreter reset it back in Egyptian to Yosef. That would be the 10 years that Yosef lived less. He was supposed to be 120, and that was 110. Second answer that is given <clears throat> is that Yosef should have never mummified Yaakov Avinu. The reason why Egyptians, or anybody for that matter, would ever mummify was in order to not see or to prevent as much as possible the decomposing of a body. We know that hachamim, not hachamim, great tzaddikim, like perfect, perfect tzaddikim, do not decompose. And by the mere fact that Yaakov Avinu um, mummified his father, alluded to the fact that it could be my father might decompose, let's not, let, let's not see him that way, and that took away from the standard that Yaakov Avinu really should have had, as we know he was a tzaddik gamur, a complete tzaddik, and no reason for him to, to rot. Those two answers, both are closely connected with the concept of kibud abaim. We know that the Torah, very few mitzvot in the Torah, but honoring our father and our mother, one of the mitzvot that the reward is told to us here in this world. Liman yarichun yamecha. 
in order to have a long life. So the same way a person is granted a long life when they honor their parents, also chas shalom if they dishonor their parents. Or in the first answer, if someone is saying something inappropriate about your parents and you don't rebuke, you don't stop them in their words, all of that would be considered disrespect to one's parents and chas shalom we should not know of this, but this even reduces the length of one's life. And that's for those two first answers. The third answer is that um, really Yosef was supposed to live till 147, just like his father Yaakov, but he donated 37 years to David HaMelech, which is an interesting, uh, an interesting one. Now, <clears throat> David HaMelech, yeah. Um, last thing we'll answer, even though the Midrash uh, Mamlois does not bring it down, but it's the common, it's the most famous answer that's qu- uh, practically always answered to why Yosef passed away earlier. Yosef had the burden of not only his family, the country, but even the world on his shoulders. And a lesson to us is as great as Yosef was, and as great as anybody is, and will ever be, or ever was, burden and responsibility and stress is something which kills us. There's no better way to say it. Now there are those that have, and those of us that are able to, hopefully cope with it better, we're not supposed to shy away from responsibility and, and, and any other types of undertakings. We're supposed to go all forth. However, we need to learn ourselves, each of us in our own way, with our different stresses and our different responsibilities, how to cope with them in order that we don't run ourselves down and we don't, we don't bring on, whether it's illnesses, sicknesses, or even our uh, death, which would be sooner, chas shalom. So these are all things we learned from Yosef Avinu. The first would be Kibud Avaim, honoring our parents in, in, in honor of those who any of the parents passed away and they're saying Kaddish. We know that the halakha of honoring our parents is not only while they are alive, it's even after they passed away. We still have not only an obligation but a mitzvah to honor our parents even after they have passed away. That means obviously always speaking good about them, and doing what they would want of us to do. If anyone ever says something inappropriate or incorrect or wrong about one's parent, they should stop them even if their parent has passed away. It's very important to note that the mitzvah of obligating our parents is not only when they're alive, but it's also after they pass away. And then the second concept of responsibility and stress, unfortunately you can't take responsibility without stress but we have to try to learn how to diminish and to cope with that stress and the shema kosh baruchu will help us with all of that baruch amen